Welcome, you have reached review time with Imperial. Today's review will be Invisible, episode seven. Let's get into it. So this episode picks up right off of last episode on uh, Mark, Vanessa, and his best friend ride home. Vanessa's upset. She doesn't want to hear nothing about Mark. She don't want to talk to him. He gets They get to her house to drop her off, and she's still upset so now he's like you know i don't want to lose her so i gotta tell her and so he's about to tell her she slammed the door in her face so he went and hurry up and changed into his superhero uniform and uh flew up in her room and she still like blew him off because she said she already knew she kind of figured it out a few weeks back and she's still upset with him that he didn't trust her enough to tell her his secret now the way this is written it just seems like like she just not they ain't been together that long and I, you know for him to just you know he just found out his powers and stuff so she upset you know whatever you know since she get over it and um you go from there you got omni man who his wife is upset and she like she why didn't you tell me and you still not telling me what took place and so she was like, she pretty much kicked him out the house. And he didn't tell her why he did what he did. She kicked him out the house. And when she kicked him out the house, he pretty much told her, like, we'll talk about this later. And, you know, not really like, I'm getting out. I'm just going to give you your space type time. So it went from there. And he left. And Cecil and them showed up to the house, you know, with the stealth crew and pretty much t- told her she needed to um, get gone right away. So they already knew he did it. They just needed some concrete proof and pretty much why he did find out why he did it. But he's indestructible. So it's no way, even if they confront him, he's not going to be held liable. So they've been trying to find out a source that can affect him. So the only source that they're thinking of that can affect him is his son because he got the same DNA and he can hurt him the most. So they was in a neighbor's house across the street eyeing him. So now Omni-Man is looking for Mark because he figured, you know, I need to get, I'm losing everything around me. I need to will my son back in to be on my team. So he's looking for Mark, comes home. He knows his wife is not there. And he, what he sees is the stealth crew. So he pretty much beat them up. Finds out that uh, Cecil's right-hand man is stalking him out and been watching him from across the street. He kills Cecil's right-hand man, um, the little nerdy chubby guy with the glasses. Nelson, I think his name was, or something like that. Kills him. And after he kills him, Nelson, hurry up and pick this like um, destruct bucket. And what it did was just blow the house up and gave him a nosebleed or whatever. And uh, um, no, I didn't die that. No, it really didn't do nothing. That that wasn't when they gave him a nosebleed. So it didn't do anything pretty much. He was just sitting there. So now he's upset. So now he's on his way looking for Mark. He see Mark's best friend, stops him. And then Mark's best friend pretty much told him, hey, he left with Vanessa and he was upset. Vanessa dissed him. And he's going out to reach Eve. Eve got a house out in the forest. And um, the house, uh, you know, he said like a thousand miles west. So now he's on his way looking for Mark. Eve and Mark is just talking about life and how he doesn't want to be a superhero no more. And then Eve pretty much saying, like, she didn't leave her parents because she didn't want to be a superhero no more. She just wanted to do out, be out and do her own thing. And she, did, she didn't do this not to help people. So, Cecil and the crew and the mom, they want to get a hold of Mark before Omni Man gets to him. And so, before they do that, they're throwing all these diversions to Omni Man to slow him up from getting to Mark. And one of the uh, diversions was this big monster that uh, Omni-Man had some problems with killing. And he had problems because it 
the thing had like uh, something in it that allowed them to be weaker. So what Cecil and them did remove that. So Iron Man would have a harder time. So what happens is when they, when uh, Eve and Mark are on their way to see what the commotion is, they said, hey, call Eve. So they call Eve up. And when they call Eve up, they tell them, hey, don't let Mark, you know, get to Iron Man. They telling her what's happening whatever meanwhile mark already seen that his father was in trouble and, and shot in so it's mark and omni man both fighting the the alien creature thing and when it was fighting the alien creature thing he wanted to go help but it was like no get away from that or whatever so she had to leave meanwhile the world is looking at this all on the news and everything like this so the mortal twins back to them Remember, they was creating a body for the robot. Now, the robot was has been glitching or whatever. So, you find out that this little mode, that little moldy thing source that was in the tomb, that was the, I thought that little moldy looking potato head looking thing was uh, just like a failed version of trying to create a body. But that was actually the um robot he was telepathing into the, the the robot machines and getting them to do what he needed them to do because he was a genius so you find out that that the robot started glitching or whatever and so finally the Marla twins like i said they took the body of a teenager and now they want to do the transfer of that little potato head thing with the mind and transfer it over so what they're basically saying is you know you might not still be alive but the, the new body will or whatever and so um they did the transfer of body and then after they did the transfer of the body the little potato head thing was still talking but it pretty much was like it wants to die so that the younger the younger youthful body of him will live on so he gets all the memories of the original and everything so it's just like uh basically a, a direct clone of him but it's not the original so the potato head thing is gone that died out and then what well, so you think it died out meanwhile he gave them uh schematics that they wanted to revive immortal now remember immortal was part of the global guardians and Ani Man killed all of them, and but he was still alive. Like Ani Man took his head off, or whatever. He was still a well. We they kept his body. So the Mauler twins, pretty much, they want to revive him so they can control the immortal. So they asked the robot thing to, to give them the schematics to make the um, like the neck brace thing so that it can control the mortal. So that's what their mission was. Meanwhile, they wanted to get paid, and so. Uh, once the robot came alive in a teenage body, he was pretty much telling them, "All right, it's time for y'all to go back to jail." Basically, he used them or whatever. And they like, "Nah, you ain't going on use us like that." So he gave them the schematics. It ended up being janky schematics, the necklace brace that they uh, um, put on uh, a mortal. So when Omni Man was being destructive, everybody was called. Cecil was calling on the new um, Global Guardians and telling them that pretty much um, they need to be on standby in case he need them or whatever. And they like, what? So now they just, they know what happened to the original um, Global Guardians. And so they pretty much like, man, Cecil tripping. And um, so when the little teenager, the genius arrives at the Global Guardian, they like, who you? And and then Rex is looking like, well, why you look at me? Like a, a young version of myself. And so he explained everything that took place. And he got a younger person body because, of course, he's in, um, he's infatuated with Monster Girl. So, uh, you know, him, him and her could have, real, um, be real, you know, have, have some um, things in common or whatever. So. But he's in, he's saying I'm still a genius. I'm everything. They didn't believe him at first, but then he started breaking everything down. And so now that situation is taking place. The Mauler twins release a mortal. 
mortal. They think that little necklace brace thing is gonna control him and he breaks out of it with ease. They say, oh man, the robot, you know, gave us the wrong schematic. So Immortal remembers everything that took place and he's furious, like he wants to fight Omni-Man. So he takes off and darts to wherever Omni-Man is. And then they, you know, everybody can see like, hey, we see a speed coming towards here, you know, and um, he sees Omni-Man and he's beating Omni-Man up. Omni-Man get back at him, they fighting to the death. And of course, Ani Man has another level of strength and power he can get to. So he punches through the mortal and pretty much kills him. And while he's doing this, the whole world is watching because everybody thought Immortal was dead. And then now they're watching, they knew Immortal was a good guy. And now they watch Ani Man kill him in front of the world. And then also. Mark just seen him do that. And so the episode pretty much ends with Mark saying, basically, like, Dad, like, in shock and, you know, like, in disbelief. And then Omni Man pretty much said, We need to talk. And then that's how it ends. So another decent episode. And um, subscribe to the channel, like the video. Till next time.